So uh, we have this is again, Ashley. This is on the Horn of Winter. Um, so Ashley says, uh, I've always suspected Benjen stashed the dragon glass, um, you know, there Cash. by the fist. Yeah, at the fist of the first man. The description of the cloak did it for me. The condition of it sounded a lot like Benjen's clothes and were described during uh, the Winterfell feast in A Game of Thrones. So I like the theory that Benjen intercepted the horn from wildlings who found it. Ten foil thought his group was attacked by whites and he was the lone survivor. Having been rescued by cold hands, he was taken to Blood Raven's cave, where he resided until Blood Raven dispatched him to bury uh, the catch en route to Winterfell, where he was to covertly serve as the Stark in Winterfell. By the end of a Clash of Kings, there was no Stark left there because Bran and Rickon had left after Ramsay sacked the castle. Um, by covertly, I mean as the hooded man in Winterfell. Uh, on a brief aside, if true, it opens the door to Benjen, former First Ranger, uh, potentially rescuing Mance Raider, the king beyond the wall. Given the historic uh, um, enmity between the Watch and the Wildlings, I think this scenario is really cool and gets to the heart of characters putting aside petty hostilities to focus on the real threat, the uh, impending long night. So I thought this was really good, man, because the idea here is that like he has a connection to Blood Raven. You understand why the show maybe did the Benjen Cold Hands thing, even though it's supposed to have been confirmed by George that they're not the same character, but maybe they were closely associated in the notes. And that's what the showrunners got with some close uh, association. And so if, if, if again, uh, Blood Raven knows there's no Stark in Winterfell because he's again somehow possibly watching or guiding. Uh, brand north and knows that Rickon is also gone and you need that maybe that's also why there's such a stirring or you know the fist of the first men sort of happens right away and, and that that's why Benjen's on his way to be that Stark to stop uh, whether it's some magical thing or it's it's blood magic or who, who knows what it is but having Stark blood in Winterfell matters for some reason it seems to be a big thing there's sense of theories around it so he's on his way there but the others are stirring and it's caused them to kind of like you know i don't know mass produce or or or, or really uh re-emerge because they've been dormant for so long they've been it's like what is it that's caused them to kind of do this is it is it the fact that the starks have been rooted out and there's they're all away and winterfell is is in disarray so if they're on the way if he's on his way back that's pretty cool that he would take up the seat there and then the real cool connection is that like the reason Bran and Rickon aren't there is because of Theon. Theon's the reason that they're not there. And if the hooded, the hooded uh, figure, the cloaked man, the hooded guy, is there in the Theon chapter and kind of calls Theon, I think he re referenced him as a, as a kinslayer. And is people wonder, is he a ghost? Is he real? Like, who is this person? So he's there, and it's just kind of interesting. It's an interesting connection to Theon, I guess. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Good yeah, I mean, so, so all, at, at the end of the day, as how do how do we how do we do we think it was just left there do we think it was it feels fresh very fresh yes exactly exactly so it's almost like um either benjen buried it there in haste and was gonna take it back uh or it was it feels like it's it's too much of a coincidence you know what i mean it feels like right. cold hands dropped it there or or benjen did it and then benjen was on his own secret see because the reason Benjamin wouldn't go back to the Night's Watch would be exactly what uh, Ashley said there is that he's had some interaction with Blood Raven or something that's told him, OK, I need to go covertly back through the wall and be in Winterfell for some reason. He has an like, otherwise. Right. Why wouldn't he just if he's right there that, like next to the Fist of the First Men, why wouldn't he announce himself and just come up and say, I'm back? I'm good. So, yeah. And it's like and he goes he goes like the thing is he goes missing almost right away. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. And really, the only the only thing that we could see that would be an issue for Benjamin is we know, you know, that Waymar Royce, right, and uh, the other two guys whose names right. I always forget. It, um, yeah, uh, right. They were just killed by another because we see it in the prequel, in the in the yeah, in the in the prologue. beginning chapter, the prologue. That's the word I'm looking for. So the prologue, right? They Gren, I think is the right of his name, right, uh, or whatever. But anyway, yeah, they get killed. Right. And then the one flees south who gets beheaded by net. And then like two chap well, like three or four chapters later, Ben Jen's missing. He hasn't come right. back. Yeah. Uh yeah. like what so something happens within that space that's 
small, you know, little block of chapters that causes him to to either either he gets killed, attacked, or he decides I have to go do something else that's so important that mm -hmm. I have to pretty much almost abandon the Night's Watch. Yeah, and it's like in, in some weird way, he's going to still think he's serving the Night's Watch because they're, they're, he's, he's an honorable kind of character like that, but um, he's given a different purpose and he's on some long-term sort of, sort of mission. Uh, Corrin says too, you know, like the old powers are, are, are waking and so if Benjen realizes that, it's like, yeah, this is still for the watch. What he's doing is still for the watch, but um, he's got information from someone. Because I think he's alive. I, th I totally think he's alive. There's just no reason not to just have found his corpse or to... to George just doesn't do that. I don't know. Where it's just like, yeah, we never found him, and he just he's, he's still missing, and it's a, it's a mystery. It matters. It's going to come back somehow. And again, it has to have been in the show notes. I always go to, like, in the show, they were given some notes. And so for some reason, they decided to make, you know, Benjamin cold yeah. hands yeah so the, there's yeah. a strong yeah. association between the two there's some i yeah i don't think that benjen yeah i don't i don't think benjen is cold hands but i do think that yeah i agree with you there's some there's some sort of association with them i think they did it as like a fan as a fan theory but the thing about it though is in order to do that remember the guy who plays benjen is only in like two episodes mm -hmm. they bring yeah. him all they bring him back like many years later Yes, there's not many characters that actually did that, that like came back. Right. You know, you have to keep these actors, all this stuff. I and mean, look how many times, you know, whoever, whatever was recast. Uh, yeah. The mountains were cast like three times. Uh, right. You know, I mean, uh, Dario um, and yeah, Bear, so, uh, Beric and Darian. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it is interesting that he's back and that they, that he decided to do that. I just think, um, there's something there. And so I love the comments that you mentioned earlier with the horn and cold hands. And then Ashley's comment here with Benjen and there being a, a, a connection to blood Raven somehow. Definitely yeah. in that cave. Awesome. Awesome.